Right, this is a little strange. Um, <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. So I'm Robbie Jerome. I'm Applications Platform Architect at VMware. Um, long time listener, first time caller. Um, so hello. Thank you. So I'm here to talk about, well, OpenShift and VMware and, and, and bringing, bringing the two things together. And this leads me to think about you know, how, how did we get here? How did, how did I get to be on the stage? And it, firstly, it comes down to VMware's sort of core values, if you like. Um, we like to do things a little bit differently. Sometimes it takes us a little while to, to get up to speed with those things. But once we are, we're all about executing, doing something, um, making a bit of a difference for our customers, um, and being passionate about how we're going to do that, how we're going to really make a difference, make something useful for our customers to be able to do something. Um, in this case, OpenShift. And how are we going to do that? How are we going to you know, pull OpenShift, make it best on the platform that you guys, or a lot of you guys, hopefully have? Um, and the, the answer to that really was to work really closely with Red Hat. Um, so at the start of the year, we started talking to the Red Hat teams, um, Chris and the, guy, the, the guys in the US, around how we, can, how we can best make the platforms that customers have work really well together to deliver the applications in, a, in an easier, more performant way. Um, and you know, shout out to Chris and the Red Hat team. They've been so incredibly helpful, so open, so sharing, um, so trusting of working together that it's actually been a really enjoyable experience, and I'm really looking forward to doing more with it. And it's, it's really about that integrity and being able to pull it together to deliver joint customer success. Um, so our mutual customers can just consume the platforms they have, the PaaS, the infrastructure, and have it run. And we can do that without the community. So the focus of what I've been working on and the team's been working on has been the community. It's been all about taking the platforms that we have. So it turns out we've got more in common than we know. You know the platform, the openness, being able to deliver things. Um, so this is what's new. We have OpenShift 3.11 on the VMware Software Defined Data Center. So the three components from the, the VMware side the, the hypervisor, ESXi, vSphere, is where most of our customers kind of stop today. When you're running OpenShift, I talk to customers, and they're using the hypervisor part. They're using vSphere. Um, but they have all the other pieces. They have all the other pieces of the software-defined data center. They're just not plugging them in in a way that gives them benefit to OpenShift. So storage, being able to use vSAN, vSphere data stores, being able to connect to the persistent volumes down through the infrastructure to give visibility across the whole stack. It, it doesn't happen for a lot of customers. Being able to deliver the existing NSX software defined data uh, software networking up into OpenShift so you can have consistent networking and security across virtual machines, bare metal, and, and the OpenShift platform it doesn't really happen today. And when we, when we ask customers, well, why doesn't it happen? Turns out that the, the answer was fairly, fairly simple. Um, the docs were quite hard. How to find all the information, how to pull it together, how to really understand, to make everything work nicely together. So that's the first thing we looked at was, OK, let's start participating with the OpenShift documentation. Let's start sharing how best to use the platforms that our customers have and how we can integrate those things, how we can get them working together. So we started, started committing to the core documentation. So you should start seeing that in the, in the 3.11 docs. And this, this, this integration is, is really about how you configure the SDN, NSXT, how you do dynamic provisioning of persistent volumes, how you manage the storage from an infrastructure level using policies, and then how you use vSphere. It turns out that when we speak to a lot of customers, um, customers are actually routing on to ESX hosts to, consider, to configure storage volumes, because that's what the documentation said. 
There's lots of easier ways of doing it. Please don't SSH onto your ESX hosts anymore. You really don't need to do it. Um, EVI admins are going to get upset. You can do it all through SDKs and command lines. So we've documented all of that stuff, and we've rolled it into the core documentation. And we've also updated the best practices, the reference architectures. So the 3.11 reference architecture document, how to deploy and run OpenShift on the VMware Software Defined Data Center in a way that just benefits both, and ultimately then benefits the, the, the applications you guys are all trying to run. So that's what we're doing. That's what we've done, sorry. Um, there's going to be some blog posts and some technical releases later this week, I think Thursday, where you can actually look at some of this stuff and, and see what we've done. So let's, let's move forward and look at what we're doing for version 4. Um, because I think a lot of the focus this week is going to be about version 4, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so from a VMware side, we've taken the um, SDDC, and that's become vCloud Foundation. So that, from a VMware perspective, is a fully lifecycle managed SDDC stack. So our software-defined networking, our storage, the hypervisor, it's all version controlled and looked, af looked after for you from, uh, from an infrastructure perspective. We want to do the same thing with version 4 of OpenShift, make it a workload domain within the VCF. So it's incredibly easy to deploy. The automated installers, the experience you're going to get is just similar to a cloud. It's quick and easy. It just works. I need, I need, I need OpenShift on, on the platform I have. Tick a button. Off we go. And once again, we're doing that through the community processes. So once again, continuing committing code, committing documentation into the OpenShift repos, being part of the Kubernetes community. Um, roughly a year ago, um, myself and some colleagues from our cloud native business unit created the, uh, the SIG VMware. Um, since then, we've, we've been involved with an awful lot more SIGs, and we kind of got carried away. SIG Lifecycle, SIG Arc, SIG Cluster API, and about 12 others we're actively involved in. Um, so we're feeding all of the sort of VMware stuff into the Kubernetes community and into the OpenShift communities to make the platforms easier to work together, to get the benefit across the board, um, and make things just better for our customers. Um, OpenShift Commons, this is my first um, OpenShift Commons event. So we're just getting started with Commons. Um, I've joined the Slack channels. I've said hello to as many people as possible. Um, you know, moving forwards, I want to be more involved. The teams are going to be more involved. I want to hear from, from you people as to what we can do to make things easier. And we want to make it happen. Um, and speaking of making it easier, um, this is kind of a big thing if you're a VMware person. A, validated VMware design for OpenShift 4.0. So a complete architecture, all the VMware pieces, all the OpenShift pieces, how they can all work together in a prescribed fashion to deliver you an application platform. So this is, this is really exciting stuff. Um, and then finally, at VMworld later this year, there's going to be a bunch of breakout sessions with myself and some others, um, and, and Chris and the Red Hat team, um, sharing best practices, sharing with the the sort of the VMware community, how we can run OpenShift um, across the stack and deliver, deliver those applications to our customers. So I'm aware that I'm sort of blocking you guys from lunch. So on my last slide, why are we doing this? Why is VMware doing this? Um, you know, we, we, have, we have our own sort of Kubernetes solutions and things like that. But it's, it's really about our customers. We have customers in common that choose to run OpenShift. We want that to be a great platform on the, on the Software Defined Data Center. And we want the applications, no matter where they're written, where they're hosted, how they're built, to run best on infrastructure that you already have today. Um, whether it's a traditional application, it's provisioning IaaS through OpenStack, um, whether it's hybrid applications with containers and some virtual machines, whether it's cloud-native applications running on OpenShift, on a PaaS, and it's, it's everything. If we've got a common platform, then everything runs, can be monitored, can be managed. It's easier to understand the application. It's easier to scale the application. It's easier to manage and deliver that value to your businesses as quickly as possible. So that's, that's really why we're doing it. We want a platform that lets you run everything in the best possible way. And the best way to do that is to be part of the community, be involved, listen to 
what everyone wants, and then try and make it happen on the infrastructures that you've got. So I've just overrun by three seconds. So thank you very much for listening to me. And I look forward to talking to you for the rest of the week.